right, so welcome everybody to the IBC community call. We start with the updates from the interchange team. Uh, Susanna, would you like to kick it off? Yeah, um, so I guess the biggest news for this week is that we launched a Twitter handle that we actually have kind of control of and we'll be pushing out kind of educational and informational updates on that handle specifically aimed at a technical audience. Um, so we've been preparing content and stuff to go out there. So if you're interested, follow the account and uh, watch out for the content that comes out there. Um, the other point is um, we're looking for feedback on the default timeout for flushing during channel upgradability. Um, this is like basically the allowed kind of downtime of a channel to make sure all of the packets in the previous version are cleared from the channel. Um, so yeah, if you have any input on suggestions of that, uh, let me know. I can drop my uh, telegram now or something. Um, and then, yeah, there's been some kind of small ongoing documentation improvements of kind of some frequently asked questions um, that have been raised around IBC um, or some things which are kind of just missing in the documentation to try and make it more complete. Cool, thank you. Uh, yeah, we also, uh, I will also put the link here we have an issue for that uh, timeout. Uh, so if anybody wants to have a look, that's the issue there. <clears throat> All right, thanks, Susanna. Uh, then for um, protocol engineering, we've been working on WASM clients. Uh, we have two backport PRs opened, one to the release lines where we want to release uh, WASM, uh, the, the two release lines of IBC Go with which uh, OID WASM will be compatible. So 7.3 and 8.0. Um, actually, the PR for V8 uh, was merged today. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, we, we have to merge those PRs and uh, then we can backport some other PRs that uh, uh, we have uh, finished in the last few days. Uh, some good news is that uh, we also got uh, green end-to-end -end tests. Uh, we have now versions of the Relayer, uh, Polkadot, Chain, um, the contracts. And uh, yeah, we have a successful uh, ICS20 transfer test, um, a timeout transfer test, a client recovery and a contract migration test, uh, and all those are working. So that's uh, very nice. Yeah, we should be able to tag the, the RC um, by the end of this uh, iteration, so somewhere next week. And then hopefully the iteration afterwards, uh, we will do the final release. So that would be somewhere middle of December. Yeah, now that the end-to-end -end tests uh, are passing, that's, uh, that's like an important milestone for us uh, for, the, for the final release. What are the um, clients that are intended in the in sort of what time frame on top of Cosmosm? I mean, what what clients won't you be able to talk to if you don't have Cosmosm running? <laughs> if if you don't have Cosmosm running, yes. Um. Well, you don't you don't need to have. Custom Wasm running your chain. You just you just need to have uh, the the Wasm VM, uh, the the old Wasm module. Yes, got it. Okay. And yeah. which clients rely on that? Um, you mean which chains? Well, it, it will depend. It will be up to the chain if they want to use the old Wasm module. Then they will need a dependency on the Wasm VM if they want to run it. Sorry, what I meant was, for example, if the the IBC client to talk to Polkadot 
is is compiled to WASM as opposed to a native uh, module, then unless you have the WASM module, you can't talk to Polkadot. Yes, yeah. correct. The the Polkadot client is implemented in WASM, and we also expect from our initial research that most uh, rollups that we're looking to integrate will also need WASM. Okay. And okay, and so then sorry, Ethereum, uh, Ethereum, Tendermint client or like Union will also require the Wasm client because you have to do the um the signature verification in ZK, and that's a Wasm operation. Okay, thank you. Cool. Any more questions about Wasm? Okay, if not, then we talk um, about it. Yeah. It might be good to work with Union or, or I guess Polymer to just add one or two extras to the end-to-end -end test on the Wasm client. Yeah, uh, we, we're, we're in contact with uh, Polymer and we're also going to start uh, working with uh, Union. Um, yeah, uh, and we, we can add definitely an end-to-end -end test as well. Um, I'm not sure if we if they have already something that we can integrate with uh, before we do that. Basically, we don't want to delay the final release anymore. Uh, so I think with the test that we have, we are happy now. Uh, but uh, if um, whenever they have a contract and um, images that we can use, we can also try to integrate in our end-to-end -end test framework. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good uh, good idea. Yeah. That we can also include those. Cool. Um, then for channel credibility, yeah, we start to pick uh, pick up the the beta milestone issues again. We just had a two hour internal walkthrough of the feature of the code, and thank you, Kian, for leading that. Uh, we have now um, yeah a bunch of uh, issues, most of them uh, small issues. To clean up some code, improve some some code, but nothing nothing major. Uh, no major refactoring needed, uh, so we should be able to complete them pretty quickly. Uh, we will tag a, a beta, uh, and yeah, uh, we will try to merge the feature branch uh, this iteration or uh, next iteration. Um, yeah, and now we're uh, yeah uh, initially we. We we're thinking of this uh, releasing this in V9, but uh, we're gonna try to release this as a minor release of uh, the V8 line. So it will be 8.1 uh, if there's no other minor release uh, in the meantime. Um, yeah, so that we can increase a bit the adoption of of the feature. Um, and as part of the channel reliability release. Uh, yeah, we're also looking for feedback for this issue uh, about um, adding. Uh, some data on chain um, to help uh, smart contracts, for example, to um, estimate how much to incentivize incentivize packets based on uh, historical data based based on um, packets that have been recently incentivized and which fees that, uh, were used for that for those packets. Um, so if you have uh, so if you have any feedback. Uh, please have a look at that issue and <clears throat> we will work on it uh, for the channel reliability release. Um, and yeah, we are targeting to do the final release uh, beginning of Q1, hopefully in January. Um, yeah. Any any questions about channel reliability? All right, if not, uh, then the other item that we are working on is the yeah, exploratory research uh, on integrating IBC Go with uh, OPStack and RollKit, uh, how to generalize IBC Go. And we continue with that um, as well. Okay, I see a question from Sam, uh, the end to end test. Have you tried comment mock? Um, 
Sorry, you don't need to address that. I was just talking to okay. you. Okay. All right. Yeah. If there's anything, anything to ask, okay. Uh, all right. Any any other questions? Any questions from the engineering update? Uh, if, sorry, uh, Carlos. I yes. have a question. Uh, I just wanted to be sure uh, the CMAP v4 and v5 are are not maintained any, anymore since the 31st of October, right? Um, indeed, uh, versions v4, v5 are not maintained. v6, I think, is until middle of December, if I'm correct. Okay, I, I checked the calendar, but I just wanted to confirm before removing them from our tests. We also have the um, the calendar with all of the end of life dates in that we could share as well. Uh, yeah, that's where I got the info, but <laughs> I just wanted to come like double check before removing yeah. them from the test. Uh, so V6, uh, yeah, until December 9th. That will be the end of life. Okay, thanks. Cool. All right, then uh, Luca, I pass it on to you for the Hermes updates. Yeah, so we were able to run the IBC Go CMAP V8 uh, and all tests are passing. So, and other than that, we're now working on, uh, we have an, a PR that's been opened by the Namada team, uh, which will add the first non-Cosmos SDK chain to Hermes. Uh, nice. And uh, we're expecting a release of a patch for 1.7, which adds some new metrics to, like one is to address uh, the, we, we added a feature to skip some client updates but it's hard to measure the efficiency. So we're adding a metric for that. And the other is to have uh, data on the observed error messages when we broadcast transactions. Cool, great, uh, thanks. And congratulations for the connection to the first connection to a non-Cosmos SDK chain. Thanks. That's nice. Cool, uh, do we have anybody from the Relay team? Yeah, I'll cover for Justin today. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so on Relayer, we added, we have SDK 50 support, Comet V8, Comet uh, O38 and IBC Go V8 support in the main branch. Um, it, uh, it passes all our end-to-end -end tests. In practice, we're seeing intermittent tendermint signature uh, issues or errors um, on some chains. So while it does work, um, that air is intermittent. So before we cut a release, we're going to dive into that um, yeah. a little bit more. Uh, besides that, uh, we're looking into adding WebSocket support in addition to the block polar we currently use um, to fetch events. How come? Um, this could be we found that this could potentially be quicker, help relay packets quicker than, um, I, I, from my understanding, it might help us get the proof quicker than some of the, the block polar events. I think proofs are not, uh, do not appear in WebSocket from what I recall, but it is indeed quicker. Okay, yeah. So yeah, we, we currently have a PR uh, that's working. We're, we're looking into, we're just working on that too, so. Um, in this upcoming release that may be supported. Uh, besides those two, um, we made, we're just looking into, we're, we made some minor improvements to Prometheus metrics, um, and we're going to be adding a few extra Prometheus metrics uh, to the relayer. That's mostly it. Hopefully we can get uh, a, a version cut yeah. with CK50 support. I want to say by the end of the week, but more realistically, it'll probably be sometime next week. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Thanks, Dan. Okay, then we can discuss any other topics. And Michael left a question there. 
about uh, the adding the denom metadata to ICS twenty. Yeah, so that would be the ICS twenty v two um, thing, and um, yeah, uh, it's probably not happening in Q one. Uh, because we have uh, plans for other things at the moment. Yeah, finishing channel mm -hmm. ability. Um, uh, working on 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 the integration with OP stack. Uh, working on conditional clients. Um, startup streaming, multi hub routing. Uh, so yeah, it will not. It will. It's very unlikely that we will be able to get to this uh, in the first quarter of next year. Um, is this uh, something that is urgent for uh, Agoric? Any anything in this blocking? Um, I, I was just thinking mainly because it's such a long poll to have chains actually adopt it once it's implemented. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why I'm just curious if we're going to see it next year because it's been like two years in the making so far. Yeah. Yeah, we should be able to get get to it next year, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, probably will be after first quarter. Uh, at least that's that's the estimate uh, at the moment. We we are already looking uh, into the work that we will be doing in, in Q one, and yeah, I think we already have uh, enough on our plates with those things I mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, this, this this so we would try to include this uh, the metadata the Dino metadata and also uh, support for uh, multiple tokens in the same packet. We would try to combine those um, two features uh, in the same uh, v two of ICS twenty. So is the standard going to be updated fairly? Uh, yeah, timely or is it just the implementation that's going to lag? Uh, we have. Um, there's a PR open by Aditya for adding the multi uh, multi dynam, so multi token to uh, ICS twenty, uh, and I don't remember if we no, I think we don't have a PR or for uh, the meta the dynam metadata. Metadata right should be PR. in there, but um, okay. it only at the moment has the decimals, I believe, or how how long the decimal should be. So. It would be useful to know, like, if there's anything else necessary that we want to have. That's all the Gork is looking for at this time. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Do you mind linking the ICS twenty multi Dina PR? Alleged name is good, but I think that's already available, right? Sorry, I mean, you uh... need the decimals for correctness. The alleged name is. Handy. <laughs> what is this token claimed to be the named as? Oh, um, as as opposed to as something different from the base denomination. Uh, that might be sufficient. So that's why I said I think I suspect that's available. You know, when you when you see it on another chain, it's always IBC slash something, and so the metadata is needed in order to figure out what that name is or what that you, what that base denom is, right? The base denom is already retrievable. You okay. can always already re resolve the IBC denom into figuring out the base denomination along with the full path, but you cannot uh, infer like the decimal place, for example. Right. Okay. Yeah, so the alleged name comes along with this, that it's kind of like the symbol for the token. Yeah. Which uh, nice. is is not really automatically distinguishable from the from the base denom. Because you have to strip the use or whatever other things people put on them. Yeah. I mean, is that something that uh is also important for the use cases you have in mind? Like knowing that uh it should be Adam not you, Adam, for example, or something along this. Um, for human readable debugging, it's useful. And okay. if it's not a big deal to, to implement, then that's even better. OK. All right, um, any, any other topics to discuss? 
I'm not sure if this was covered in previous IBC core calls, but if I understood correctly, the IBC RS community calls will be brought into here, right? Into these Tuesday calls. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, that's or... um, that's uh, the idea. Um, and um, yeah, probably it's a good moment to announce it <laughs> here. Uh, we didn't discuss it in the call before, but uh, yeah, indeed, we were thinking about um, merging uh, this call with the IBCRS community call uh, starting January. Um, and also we are thinking of making it a monthly call. So instead of bi-weekly uh, to do the call once a month. How does that sound uh, to everyone? I don't know. I'm joining quite rarely. I do get the benefit of joining every two weeks, but uh, if there's if calls regularly finish before, say thirty minutes time, then it could be an indication of making it less frequent. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. But I'm not a user. I'm core. I think uh, Michael, Dean, Alex, uh, Sam, Jim. <laughs> I don't mind short calls fast enough as opposed to accumulated long stale issues in the, in the agenda. So, and uh, I actually have to leave at 30 minutes after. So this worked out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, we can, we can try it monthly and see how it goes. And yeah. And we can always switch back to a like, weekly. This is yeah, good SDK and commit teams are also doing Papa. monthly now. So maybe it's okay. All right. Um, yeah, so that was the announcement. Anything else? If we don't have anything else, then we can uh, yeah finish before thirty minutes. All right, then uh, thank you everyone. Thanks for joining. Thanks everyone. Thanks bye. 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 Thanks thank everyone. You. What's this all? <laughs> El domino, 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 el domino,